Welcome back to the shop. Okay, so yesterday we got the neck joint um, roughed in fitting. So we're at the point now where this is going to need to be um, set, which is to get the to get the geometry such that this sits flat where it's supposed to, and it's stiff all the way around, or firmly fastened, or joined, or set. Set is the is the term. And so there's that bit that needs to be done. There's. Hold on. Let me put this back where it was. I'm probably going to end up putting it right back out, but that's okay. So there's that bit that needs to be done. Um. There's also the fretboard needs to be shaped to final size. Right now it's vastly oversized. Um, it's also, so while I was watching a lot of those Blues Creek guitars videos, he was setting the neck when it was, it wasn't necessarily a finished neck, but it could be a finished neck. But it was definitely not in rough block form. He didn't set it in this form. He set it when the heel was shaped either final or very, very close to final, uh, which makes sense because then you're taking less wood away and you're not fighting for a close seam on stock that's going away. Um, so the idea is to get it as close to final as you can, I think. So I, I'm pretty sure that I should not try setting this neck joint until the neck is closer to the final shape. Um, that means I think I'm pretty much done with the body for now until we get to the point of setting the neck. Um, now I'm at the point now where, so if the body is basically done for the moment, if I'm just going to hold off on touching it until these pieces, um, I've still got my bridge chunk. This is my piece for the bridge. That will go there. Um, the next steps then I think are to focus more back on the neck again. Uh, and get everything, you know, situated and ready to, ready to go. So that's probably where I am now. Um, the, the tasks remaining, because it has been a while, uh, that I need to do are these wings have not been flattened on the back side yet, so I've got to flatten that out. I've got to work out a process to do that, I think. I may just do it by hand. I'm not entirely certain just yet. Um, but that's got to be done. Uh, then the headstock plate has to go on and the peg holes are, need to be drilled for. And so there's that. I want to get the heel block closer to final shape as well. Um, of course, the, the back needs to get shaped. Um, the fretboard needs to be cut to width. Because right now, the fretboard, one of these two things has to match the other and you kind of have to cut one first. It's not going to be very easy to put the fretboard on and then try to finish the shape to size. It's going to be easier to get it to final size in this form rather than stuck to the, to the board. So exactly. that feels like the next step is to get the fretboard cut down to, the final, to its final size. All right, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to lay a strip of masking tape down the center and I'm basically going to cover this thing this bit of sawdust I'm basically going to cover this fretboard front the front of the fretboard with masking tape so that I can mark out where I need to cut Okay, so there I've got that. Now, these two ends are getting cut off, so I can pretty much do whatever I want to them. What I think I'm going to do is take my, take my marking knife, find that center line, and just make it into a V so I can get a pencil into it. Because right now it's just the knife line and it's tough to, it's actually really kind of tough to see. There we go. That side's good. Okay, 
there's that. Then I will take the sharpest of my sharpest sharp sharp pencils. This one is the sharp one. We'll take my strategy and drop the tape on the floor because the theme of this entire freaking game is to drop stuff on the floor. Line up my little notches here. Very, very close. There we go. Okay. There. Lined right up with my centers. Good. Now, magic numbers are 43 and 53. 43, uh, 43 millimeters f f at the nut and 53 millimeters at the 12th fret, which I did not mark anywhere. So, oh, there I can see it. Ha! So that 12th fret should be right around in there somewhere. There. I just stuck my thumbnail into the 12th fret slot to locate it. Yeah. So there's just a little dint. dint. So that's where it should be 53. Up here at the nut, it should be 43. So that's what we will. I just stuck my fingernail into that so that I can get a crisp edge to view at, and that works out well. Okay, so 43 at the nut. I'm going to take my uh, protractor, or not protractor, compass, and I'm going to get my, my 43. So half of 43 is 21 and a half millimeters. So I'm going to go for that. And then I'm going to add a millimeter so that I have a little fudge room. I'm all right with getting things. I wanted a tiny bit oversized so that I have room because when I go to, um, when I go to, once it goes on the neck and I smooth things out, I'm going to take some and I will easily be taking a half millimeter from either end so or either side. So we're just going to take and I'm going to get as close as I can get to that nut slot. In fact, I'm going to go just past it because it's not going to matter that much. And I'm just going to make a mark there. And then we can mark our 43 here. Okay. Then the another the next the another another the next magic number it's 53 centimeter or millimeters, which will just be add 10 to this. Sorry, no, it's add five. So 53 is 25, half of that is 25, so 26 and a half. And then I will add another millimeter to that so that it will end up a millimeter wide. We'll come to our 12th fret area here. And I'm gonna go right in the fret slot gently I'm not going to poke down. I'm just going to make the marks. And that'll cover that. So now I've got a mark up here and here. I can take a flat edge, line them up. Where do I have no shadows? No shadows on this side. So something I. Um, there we go. Uh, there. No, that moved a lot. Okay, so this is where you take your time, slow down. And then we'll make our line. And this line is about a millimeter big on either side, which is good. That's perfectly fine. That buys me a lot of room. I was originally thinking a half mil oversized, but a millimeter is fine. So then you saw I flipped the whole fretboard around because, again, I'm avoiding shadows. I'm trying to stay out of the shadows so I'm not visually aligning something with a shadow in my in my way. There we go. That is the outline of our fretboard right there. Now what I'm going to do, what I think I'll do, is head on over to the bandsaw and cut close to this line. I won't take the line exactly, but then I can plane it after that. Um, Plane it to the to the dimensions. 
Yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, so I'm going to head over to the bandsaw real fast and make a couple of very trepidatious cuts. All right, we are now cut to width. I think we're going to do some length now. Um, I'm going to hold off on the uh, bottom end, the sound hole side, because I want to have I want to have some I want the neck on, and I want to have a chance to adjust. But the nut area is safe. Does it matter? Does it do it matter now? I don't know if it matters right now. I'm having a case of. Uh, Paralysis by analysis, I think. I'm, uh, oh good, we did not cut our, so we've got plenty of room for our uh, fret markers. They'll fit just fine. That's good. I, was a, I wasn't that worried because I made sure, but it's always nice when you make a cut and you check that it didn't take off the stuff you wanted to keep. And it didn't, and that's good. It's always nice when that happens. All right. I have to come up with my next steps. Really what it comes down to is I need to get this darn fretboard or this darn neck shape pretty close. We're in very close proximity now. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing to, that I did for this to this. I could probably center the fretboard on this and do the same thing, but this is working well. That 12, that 12 looks good. So I can see now I've got about an eighth on that side to take off. Flip it around. Don't get don't get seduced by the shadows. I don't know why I said it that way, but that is the voice I decided to use. There we go. That gives me my neck shape. That should, in theory. Come here. Put the width of this right where I would like it. Eh, it's a little narrow there. Interesting. Interesting. That's going to be our nut slots zone. The nut's going to be back a little further than that. And uh, there we go. That's going to be fine. Yeah. 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 All right. Sorry, I'm weird. No, I'm not sorry, I'm weird. I'm weird, and I like it. Uh, da -da -da -da. What am I doing now? So, we have, um, I guess we can mark out that shape. What I think I should try to do first is get this flat. So I'm going to try to figure out just what I'm going to do to do that. What I'm going to do to do that, do to do that. Yeah, I gotta get this sh shape. I gotta get the bottom, the back side of the headstock shaped flat um, somehow. We'll figure out how. I think I might just throw it up on the bane side. We'll see. I'm gonna try some. Try something. All right. Bring you back here in a second when I figure out how to do that. It occurred to me that if I can just hold this up like so, I can get router table with a flush trim bit in here to do the flushing up. So here's the problem. The wings are thicker than the back. If I'd, if I, I don't know. I'm not sure there's an easy way to to have done this differently ahead of time. There are many ways to do it. Um, every one of them has things you have to deal with or compensate or account for. So, I think just this is the natural progression of things. And I think I'm gonna attempt. I don't know if I can climb cut. That's a tall cut to do on a climb. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to do this with a conventional cut, I'm just going to be concerned a little bit about uh, about tearing out because I'm not that thick here. This doesn't have a lot of play. Um, but at the same time, there's only going to be a bit of the wings here. Let me grab the template and trip on the floor as I head around here, fall down, hit myself. So those wings will only see a little bit up here, a little bit down here, a little bit out here, and a little down here. It's almost exactly this width in the middle. Um, we take about a sixteenth 
on either side. So I don't have a ton of concern for tear out, but I have a little. So I'm going to grab some hearing protection, some, some other personal protection devices, and we're going to give flesh trim in this a shot. We'll see what happens. As is somewhat frequently the case, my trepidation did not coincide with the level of effort or risk or difficulty. That's all nice and flush. It's not flat or smooth. That's the next thing I need to do. Um, and so I'm thinking, I'm thinking it might be sandpaper time. I'm not sure I can do much else to, uh, to get that very flat right now. I don't think I can get a plane in there. I'm not sure I want to try a spoke shave because I don't think I will get it very flat either. Um, so I'm thinking we'll just 80 grit sandpaper this good and flat in the old prepping, in ye oldy prepping weapon. So to the bench. All right, so this elaborate little clamping system is just to keep things flat down on the bench so I can work the back side of the headstock. Um, this is the off cut. These are both the off cuts from the rough saw on board that this came out of um, and the hold fast just holds everything at the angle so that it supports it and it's not flopping out there. The bench vise actually pinches it. This is doing the majority of the work. This is keeping things from flopping around too much. Um, and I've just got some 80 grit and I'm gonna, I went after it with a plane but the grain's moving too much around so I'll just go after it like this and I'm gonna go until it's smooth. I'm not gonna worry too much about thickness just yet. I'll worry about thickness once it's smooth um, and straightness and flatness and all that stuff. So we're just going to do some real boring sanding here for a little bit. So the back of the headstock is now as clean as I need it to be really. There's a tiny little bit of scraper gouge, but I can take that out real easy with a little bit of sanding. Nothing to use it. So the next step is, I think it's time to shape this little guy. And it's always a challenge because I'd love to be able to do it like this flat on the bandsaw and just cut. but. Sadly, the templates and the patterns with my volute and all that sort of stuff, it makes it tough to do that. And so, because the zero is like way up here, the fret, the nut is way up here. And that's just, my volute gets in the way. It always curves there. So it's just, this would be my preferred. If I were a furniture maker doing it, I would want to do it like that, good and flat and down. And I am sure that I could project this 3D over, or project this 2D, vector over a 3D shape and cut, I don't, but it, eh. There's another way that I'm gonna go for. Because when you cut this out, these edges should be square. This tip should be square to the surface instead of tipped back or swept or anything, which is why I'd wanna do it this way. But what I can do first is rough it like this on the bandsaw. And so what I'm gonna do real quick is Position this and double check my centers here. And all I'm really doing is making sure that this edge is square to the. Actually, you know what? This bar, this block is square. So I can. I can even cheat a little. I can do a squareness. So it's a good thing I did not make that cut yet. So I can just set this square up here run this into it and now we are definitely square which also means the center line is being maintained all the way along its length now all I'm doing is putting it where I would like it to be like so and I'm going to mark out roughly the shape oh it moved don't you hate when that happens Dang it. Dang it. Let's try again. 
I'd like it to not do that now, please. Please don't do these. Right. Just hang on to it so much closer to center. Like that. Now just hold it and do a light pencil mark here. This will not be the final contour because it was cut with a router anyway and it's got its little curves. Okay. So that is the rough shape of the neck or the headstock. I am going to go to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut this, but I'm going to cut it like an eighth of an inch away or slightly more even. Um, and I'll do this little bit right at the very end. I'm going to do all of these things first while this is still rocking stable. Um, yeah, we're going to take this off to the bandsaw and get to it. Okay. So I, was, I had a brief moment of um, panic of whether I should put the headstock plate on or not first. I don't care, actually. What I'll do is cut this, and the next step when I flush trim with the router, then um, when it comes time to put the headstock plate on, I want to get the nut in place. I'd like to have the fretboard on before I put the headstock plate on. I think, I think I'd like to get the fretboard on first. Still trying to decide on that, but I'm going to get this cut so I can just make some forward progress. Um, so this will be a little noisy, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep the sound on because I may end up yammering at you here while I do this. So it's going to be a case of run the guitar in while things are kind of hanging up and stuff. And then I'll come out of that and then I can come into this. Um, so I'm going to here, let's show you. So there's this, this little, that doesn't work real well because, well, because it's clear. Hold on a second. I have a better diagramming thing. All right, this thing, I'm going to cut. This will be here, All right? I'm going to cut this bit first and this bit first. Then I can come in here. If I start on this bit, I could do the entire, uh, the entire length. But uh, I'm going to have to see how I feel about that. And then I'll do this top bit last. Because this end is solid and square, and it'll give me a nice place for the whole thing to sit on and not, not try to twist on me. So that is what my reasoning is. Whether or not it's wisdom or insanity remains to be seen. So oh, let's just start this up. Um, I'm going to grab some dust collection. Hang on a second. Do, 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 do. Ow. I hurt my hand. All right. Away we go. And I'm staying well away from the lines because I need the room so that I can make that those peaks go vertical the correct, the correct way. Just getting the bulk of this out of the way.
closer to the lines now than I was up on the headstock just because I know I'm going to be flushing that up. And now I'm going to raise enough for the butt, butt of the neck. There we go. Now we're in smooth sailing. It's going to get a little hard to push here in a second as the wood thickens up. thicker here. Everything is still very oversized, so we're not in any risk. That's loud. I'm going to watch my fingers. There we go. Alright, I'm going to call that. That was a, a bit nerve-wracking. This area here got a little bit too close to the line for my liking, but I think it'll be okay. Now what I can do is cut the top of this. Um, I'm going to do it just like right here. Leave a lot of room on this. Leaving myself a ton of room on that. That is very rough shaped. Plenty though. I'll, uh, I'll do a lot of rasping on that when it's done. But basically it was... That wood's got to get removed somehow, so let's just remove it. Um, I, need to, I need to do some beveling on this end for the heel block. Hold on, that's noisy. Need to bevel this, these down. These get, needs to get thinner, it needs to taper a bit. But that's pretty close, so the next bit, I'll bring you back here. Just, all right, template is on the headstock. Um, I'm gonna hold it like this. I've got a bottom bearing flush trim bit. It's a huge one, so it's not gonna get into this corner very well, but it'll take care of the rest just fine. Um, and I'm gonna use it to get this stuff nice and smooth. I'm pretty sure the radius of this is smaller than the radius of this, so that should be all right. Um, there ain't nothing to this but the doing, and I'm going to, I'm gonna leave this right here and it's going to get me kind of close. It won't get me final nut width, I don't think, but we'll get close. So It's not a big deal. I'll get to the final width at some point. It doesn't matter right now anyway. So, uh, Yes, yeah, so, yeah, having at it. Yeah, we're going to do this. It's getting it done. Put some hearing protection on it. So I hit something here that um, I not I didn't hit something. I've I just noticed something that's kind of a problem. A bit of a tiny thing. It's a minor issue, but so the this sort of curve, this sort of curve when I rough cut it, that area where I did go a little far with the bandsaw, it did tip back. So I've got you can see where it's flush here. 
but I've got this little weird bevel. What I think I can do is very, very carefully, once I pull this off, I can, I can taper this back and it won't be that obvious. I'm not terribly worried about it. It's just one of those moments of, ah, I missed. I see a spot that's going to have, a have, have trouble. Um, so I just need to make sure I play with that a little bit. I'm, some of this is going to get thinned out. This is actually going thick right here and it shouldn't be. The volute, it'll probably stay flat till it gets you know, down to about here. So this should be minimal. It'll be a minor. It's a totally minor thing and I'm not even the least bit worried about it. It was just a moment of, oh, I just noticed that I did not quite put the pattern exactly. It is a perfect center though. So it's better that it's centered and I can deal with that. Um, but that's, uh, that's, the, that's the template part of this. I'm gonna go grab some transfer punches, I think after I check this fit real quick and uh, see about marking for the tuning machines. So I'll bring it back here in a second. All right, so I've got my, I'm just, it's barely held right now. It's just there so I can bear down on it. Got my 2564th transfer punch. I checked that the holes work well with, with those pieces of, uh, with the tuning machine. So we are set to uh, center punch it and if I can get it on the drill press just like this, I'll drill them now. Um, I have to drill them again. I have to drill them out once the headstock plate is in. But I think that's okay. I'm all, I'm all right with that. Uh, having to do that twice, that's, that doesn't freak me out too much. But I've already got the bit in, so if I can do it with the template in place, I'm going to try, so I've just got to get it up, up high enough to, uh, to clear the drill press table. So I'm going to move you over there and you can see that. All right, we have figured out a way that I can keep the headstock parallel with the table, hanging off the back side of the drill press so that it's not catching on the neck. Um, we're just going to just go and get it, I think just gonna get it actually think about um, whether or not I should uh, clamp it I don't think I can very easily though so I will however clamp this little bugger this little bugger went to market yeah let's see about mm, well let's try to get one less thing slipping around on me at least how about that if I can do something with that, that's enough. Okay, let's drill this. Do it. Get on it. Get on that drilling. All right, here we go. Try to exit slowly so that it is as clean as I can make it. Okay, we poked through it. Not too bad on the tear out, a little bit, but not bad. Try to do better this time. This bit is nice and sharp, so that's nice. Pretty good on the tear out there. Just get better and better. on the tearing out. Kind of wish this was a left-handed drill press right now, though. Clamping a lot better with my right arm. Doing 
doing okay. It's a little worse on that one, but the peg heads are going to cover it. I just want it to be a clean job if I can help it. I can get that. All right. All right, all right, all right. Drilled for tuning machines. That's good. That is good. I just wanted to do that before I took this template off. So now I think we're done with this template. We can pop it off. And then uh, we'll figure out the next step next.